Okay, this is part 10 of the Mark 13 series. And what keeps on being really important is that the variants are being used in order to get this meter in Mark. In particular, and that's what this video is going to sort of focus on, in particular, way up here at the beginning, see here's Mark 13, this is Matthew in the middle, and this is Luke at the bottom, because this video is going to be about this, I'm in Lego, Humin Hoti, the anaphora in Matthew, how Mark is playing on both Matthew and Luke, again putting a final nail in the coffin of the argument about, well, Matthew's not the first gospel, Mark is. Bullshit. And Mark is somehow presently aware of this, because watch. Here's the first occurrence of Amen Lego Humin Hoti. Particular Hoti. The Hoti being added. This is only in Biza's text. Now, Beza's text has got a special place amongst Bible manuscripts for a lot of reasons. But one of the big reasons is that it was a, what's called a diglot. Which means that in the left-hand pages, and it was all hand-done. In the left-hand pages, it was Greek text. And in the right-hand pages, it was Latin. And it used the Old Vulgate, so it must be really Old Greek. That's what gives Beza's text credence. The handwriting on it, and I've shown you that in other videos by now. The handwriting on it is about 5th century, 4th century. They call it unseal. Okay? But the parsing of the text puts this all by itself on a line. I've shown you that in the videos already. That's not the way they did it in those days. In those days, all the other texts we have with the same handwriting, the same calligraphy style, they would create columns that it, once you got to the edge of the column and you were at the, the limit of the size, the width of the column, it didn't matter if you broke a word in the middle. You just kept on running all the letters together. It was really unreadable. Unlike theirs, Beza's doesn't do that. It breaks every single line into a clause, just like I'm doing pretty much here, where and in Beza's text they start with chi's or with epi's, because those are the beginnings of clauses in the Greek. And they, they sometimes use whole sentences, what we would call a verse, but a lot of the times they're just breaking it by where the prepositions or the conjunctions are, which is what you're supposed to do when you're parsing for clauses. I never saw that before until doing Mark. And then I had to look at Beza's text. Now, a lot of people just poo-poo Beza, first of all, because it's only the Gospels, and not even all of those. And they poo-poo it because it's a diglot, meaning that the Latin is on the right-hand side, so they think, well, it's not really, you know, somebody may be translating it from the Latin into Greek. You know, they doubt the authenticity of it. Here I'm going to show you that we have real evidence of it being authentically Mark, at least with this phrase. You see here? Right there. That's 63. That's the first date line. Okay? And it's interrupting. It's in the middle of a sentence. Christ is saying, you see all, the, you see all these great buildings? He's very sarcastic. All right? Believe it when I tell you, not one of them is going to be on top of another. Okay? When you go to do the same phrase here in Matthew, which is the original, it's the same meaning. Okay? It's broken the same way. You see all this? And actually, he's here is saying, don't you see all this? And so some scribe thought, well, maybe I better put ooh in Mark's text. But it doesn't belong. And the reason why you know it doesn't belong is he's tying to the 63 date line that's in Matthew. He's rephrasing the words in order to fit the date line so that you know, hi, I'm talking about the Matthew text here. I'm tagging it. It's a tag. In other words, these syllable counts in Matthew that we got, they're the right ones. 
And we know that because Mark is writing 63 years after Judea is a province in 69 AD in order to tag the 63 here in Matthew 24. It's deliberate. I don't know how else you can look at it. It's really obviously deliberate. There's a broken sentence. You see all this. Don't you see all this? And to take the ooh out is really important for Mark to do. Because, see, he's expecting you to know the original. He's rephrasing it to make a point about the current time. You see all this. It's not don't you see. It's you see all this. Because right at he, the time he's writing, Jerusalem is surrounded by armies. Still Vespasian is there. He hasn't yet become emperor. Vitellius is emperor at the time. Otho has just died or is just about to die. He's just been defeated. And so it's like, hello, Vespasian, Titus, Herod. They're all there right surrounding Jerusalem. Don't you, you know, see, look. Look at, these buildings are about to go down, just like Christ predicted back here. See, so it's real deliberate. He's calling the reader's attention to Matthew, reminding them of it on purpose, splitting the sentence the same way, all right, to make a point about it. And then 84 in Matthew is high as is God's decree, okay? Mark adds 7. Because this is the number of tribulation, and the idea was that when the temple went down, maybe the tribulation would start. It was scheduled to start at Christ age 91, but now the church is there. Maybe it starts early, but the 91 still has the same doctrinal meaning. Christ was supposed to be 91 years old when the tribulation was supposed to start had there been no church. So maybe it's going to start early. Okay, it's also a dateline, and I'll explain that. You know, 91 years after the second temple, 91, when he's writing, when Mark is writing, that's 91 years after Herod started rebuilding. And there's some debate as to whether he started rebuilding the temple then, or just his own stuff. Because it depends on whether you say that Herod began his rule in 40 B.C. when the Senate um, made him ruler, or 37 B.C. when he finally conquered enough in Judea afterwards to get, you know, actual control. It's a long story there. But it's still evocative, all right? And so now, in order to make sure that that syllable count works, he truncates the verb. He's using the same verb that Matthew is using, okay? But he's using a different tense so that he can truncate the syllable count and get the 91 he wants. Alright, that wouldn't work if this wasn't in the text. I hope you get that, see? This ends up being 28 in length. If that's not there, it's not there. And there's no dateline here. And then it's like, wow. Okay? But the scholars think, oh, well, because this is in Biza and it's a diglot, it couldn't possibly belong. Well, yeah, because they're not counting syllables, so they don't realize the syllables prove that it's an intent. Doesn't that prove intent to you? He cuts, he cuts the length of the verb so he can get to the 91. That wouldn't be an issue if this weren't in the text. Okay, that would only be 20 syllables long. And then all these things would be like eight syllables short. And a lot of the meaning that you're going to see, and I'm going to prove it to you now, wouldn't be there. And what kind of meaning am I talking about? Well, let's talk about the time that all the scholars do recognize Mark is using Amen Lego Humi. Right down here. Oh, this is such a killer. I want to, I want to die. See? Here's the next time. And what's the syllable count? 1078. And anybody who memorized scripture orally, that's a big number to them. As soon as I saw it, I thought, oh my God, he's quoting Isaiah 53 entire. Because Isaiah 53 is a very, is, is a, a strange uh, meter. It's perfect, it's perfect, um, balanced 
syllable counts. I've done videos on that in this playlist. Um, it begins just before the part one of, uh, you know, the Matthew versus Luke. All right. So he's doing 1078 here. And, so, and if you memorized Isaiah 53 in Hebrew, it's like, oh my God. Because Isaiah 53 in Hebrew is from 52.13 to 53.12. The actual syllable count is 462 for a reason. But there are insertions, as it were, off book time. Because the whole theme of it is first David's birth to last David's death. It was a schedule. And you know that if you count your syllables, once you look at Daniel 9, Daniel 9 is using this. Daniel 9 is using this as his juridical cause to ask God to restore time, to restore the temple. Okay, so now since we're talking about the temple still, I'm in Lego Huming was the first instance. Here we are in the middle with Matthew again. And the same text that you see above in Mark is used right here in Matthew. See? Exact same text, except, see this word mechris? This is so killer. That means until. Eus. One syllable. Also means until. But he wouldn't get to his 1078 if he didn't use two syllables. And he wouldn't get to his 1078 if at the very start of it you didn't have this because that's eight syllables. You see the point? The syllable counts audit themselves. And it's a sevening difference between 1078 and 63. Okay? The, uh, the previous Amen Lego Humin, as you might remember, started at 63. It's real important because that tells you how he's playing on the other two Gospels. See, here's 63. So this is actually the 64th syllable. And why is he doing that? Because Christ is talking at the beginning of the year. 63 years remain to the millennium, counting the year he talks. But he's talking at the beginning of the year, just before he's going to die. He's talking about two weeks. So it's like at the very beginning of the year, because Passover is two weeks after the beginning of the year, sacred year. Vernal equinox. He's talking on the vernal equinox. So it's really 64 years to go. You see, this is deliberate. All right, but if you take 63 and then you come down to 1078, the same last David, ha ha, Isaiah 53, the last David is still talking. His death day has not come yet. All right. So the difference between the first Dom and Lego Humin Hoti and the second one is divisible by seven. And he's quoting Matthew, quoting it. Now watch this. Because I because I've been really obsessed about this because it bothers me that this is eleven ten. It seems to me it's supposed to be eleven thirteen because our boy Luke, down here at the bottom, has a total of 1085. And that same syllable count here is only 1082. And I'm like, what's wrong with the three years? How come there are three years missing? And there, is, there are variants in here, which would bring this total to 1085. So I'm trying to figure out, well, do I count the variants in Matthew or not? Well, now let's take a look at Mark. 1078, quoting this verbatim, quoting it. Now watch this. This is such a killer. I think I just need to, I need to just, I, I, every day I think to myself, God, you should just kill me. I'm in Lego home. You remember before I took you up here. Sorry, this is so complicated, but you know, the word of God. 64. Right? And then we come back down. Whoops, I went too far. We come back down. And now we're at 1078. It's 
divisible by 3, the difference between the two. Okay? The end of the clause, the end of the, 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 end of the section from, fr from the beginning of the section, prior end is another way to do it, is divisible by 7. Okay? Keywords, key clauses, anaphora, divisible by 7 is a feature of scripture. I've been showing it now for quite a while, especially these three passages. Now, let's take a look at this. Well, okay, that one was 64 in Matthew and Mark. This is 111 in Matthew, who Mark is quoting. So watch. 1078 minus. One, 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 one. Thirty-three. Does that number ring a bell to you? Hmm? Like the age of Christ when he died? And this is 178, which is the meter count including the two ellipses that Isaiah puts in. 364 for the number of years the temple is standing and 252 years between the time David died and Hezekiah is being addressed in what you would call Ma uh, Isaiah 53, 1. 33. Using a total syllable count that everybody would have known was from Isaiah 53, including the ellipses. They're like the insertions that are elsewhere in Scripture. Everybody would have known that. Oh, the difference is 33. Even if you didn't know that this was Isaiah 53 syllable count including ellipses, you would know that the difference between 1111 and 1078 is 33. Christ's age when he dies. Huh? So what does that tell you? That Mark is counting syllables in Matthew? And he's counting it based on the first syllable of the word. Right? Oh, but it gets better than that because he plays a similar game right here on Luke. And I'll cover that in the next increment because my brain is going now. Okay, so now we get on to how Mark plays on Luke. You saw here how he plays on Matthew. That's the same text. Except there's one little difference besides Mekris. See, he's using Mark up here. He's using Mekris. Whereas Matthew used Is. Alright. Matthew next uses An. Which means if. When. Whenever. All these things come to pass. Mark is using U. Okay. U. Because there's no whenever anymore. Okay, it's happening now. When he writes. In 69 AD. And that's a real important thing to say. He's making a play on when he's writing. By doing this. Okay. So. That's the play on Matthew. And we went through that. And the syllable count that he's playing on starts right here. And we saw that. Now let's take a look at our friend Luke down here. Luke's ends at 9.30. Ends. If you were to subtract just before the start of Mark's same phrase with those two changes because Matthew's using the exact quote of Matthew. L Luke is using the exact quote of Matthew. As you can see there, you can see it here. All right. The difference is that by Luke's day, Eus is now two syllables. That gets him to 9.30. Alright? 
if however you go back to Mark who's writing you know 11 years later it's really important to say that Mark is writing 11 years after Luke it's real important to say that you're gonna see something about that in a minute but if you were to just go okay well before this phrase starts because th this is a sevening test and after this phrase ends is one of the possible seven sevenings that they're using well well take a look 1049 in, in Mark minus 930 in Luke is 119 that's seven less than 126 when the temple was supposed to go down you know minus tribulation time that's divisible by seven Oh, 17 sevens. Well, well. So then the silver counts in Luke must be the right ones because we're looking at, 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 at Mark play on Luke's silver count. But that's not where it ends, honey. It gets better. If you were instead since we're beginning at the start here. If you were instead to take that beginning, okay, see this is an ending, ending of the clause. This is before the clause starts in Luke. This is before the clause starts in Matthew. And this is where it ends in Matthew. Right? I mean Mark, right? So now look. Let's take, let's do it differently. Let's take 1078 where Mark ends. And now we're going to subtract from before the same clause in Luke begins. 904. What do you get? <gasps> 174. And what? That's divisible by 3. And that's 58 threes. Yeah. And remember before when we saw the difference between Matthew and Mark where Matthew's clause here the Amen is starting at 1111 okay and that minus 1078 was 33 and that divisible by 3 is what? 11 now what's 11 and 58 of the 58 threes that equals 174? <gasps> 69 AD when he writes. Which is 11 years after Luke wrote. Oh, and 69. They used BC AD in those days? Yeah, they did, but they didn't call it that. They just did the numbers. And how come? Well, there was a guy named Livy, L-I-V-Y, you can look him up, who, in the year that Christ was born, said that Rome was 750 years old. But there was another guy whose name was Varro. And in the year that Christ was born, he said that Rome was 753 years old. And that's the guy, Varro, saying 753, that all the Roman historians today use. But they had the same problem when Christ was born. You had one guy that Augustus liked saying, well, Rome was 753 years old. And they didn't know about Christ, but the year that he was born, that's what they were arguing. Versus a guy who really was much more respected named Livy, who in that same year was saying, well, it was 750 since Rome was born. But Claudius made the 753 law. So now Christ's actual age has to be cut if you want to reconcile the Roman history, then and now, by three years. Same problem we got now. Isn't that interesting? So our boy... Mark is saying hi. You see, if you take this and you subtract it from here or here, 
and then you divide it by three and then you add the number of threes that was in the 33 that I played on in order to, ma to bookend to Matthew you get 11 plus 58 58 being when Luke wrote and Christ was age 33 when Matthew wrote but we have to call it 69 58 plus 11 because they cut off three years of Christ's life in the official numbering of the Roman age under Claudius that became law is this a clever way to tie to both Matthew and Luke or what so honey if you're ever doubting whether or not this is the word of God and whether we have it preserved after all these centuries just remember this video okay I don't know if you can ask for clearer proof than this and you know this is only one chapter but when you see this much precision and attention to syllable counts what do you think the other chapters are doing 